Hello everyone, I'm Yu Hong. Today I'm going to talk about our work, XRP, in kernel storage function with eBPF. This is joint work with my collaborator from Columbia University, Google, and the University of Utah. With new storage technology like 3D crosspoint, storage devices are getting much faster. As a result, kernel software is becoming the bottleneck for storage. Let's take a look at the breakdown of the average latency of a random 512-byte read, which shows the percentage of time spent on hardware and kernel software with different type of disk. Here, kernel software means the storage stack inside the kernel. We can see that a higher percentage of time is spent on kernel software when the storage device is faster. Storage kernel software overhead account for around 50% of their read latency on the second generation of Optin SSD. So what is the kernel software overhead? Let's take a look at the data path of one typical read request. When the application submits a read request, it first needs to cross the kernel boundary and reach the syscall layer. After that, the read request will be sent to the file system and the block layer and is then forwarded to the NVMe driver. The NVMe driver then sends a request to the storage device. Once the read request is completed, the response is returned to user space in reverse order. Here, the percentage of time spent in storage device represent the hardware overhead, and the rest are the kernel software overhead. OK, now we know the composition of the kernel software overhead, but the question is how to eliminate this overhead. One extreme way to do that is to bypass the kernel entirely. Kernel bypass is a very, top very popular topic in academia. Then there are many exciting works such as Demi Kernel, Shenango, and Snap, which build kernel bypass system for storage or network applications. In industry, the most common library for storage kernel bypass is SPDK. Kernel bypass configures the storage device to be managed by user space and disable its interrupt. The user space application can then communicate with the storage device directly without using any syscall. By eliminating all of the kernel software overhead, the read latency can be reduced by up to 49%. However, kernel bypass is not a panacea. It is true that it does not incur the overhead of the kernel storage stack, but using kernel bypass also means that there is no fine-grained access control because any process can access the device directly. What makes it worse is that it requires busy polling for completion because the interrupt of the storage device is disabled. That means processes cannot yield CPU when waiting for I.O. It has two further implications. First, CPU cycles are wasted when I.O. utilization is low. Also, CPU cannot be shared efficiently among multiple processes. OK, so kernel bypass doesn't fit the need for people who need isolation and want to use CPU more efficiently. Since isolation and resource scheduling are two key services provided by the kernel, the question then becomes how to reduce the kernel software overhead without bypassing the kernel. Notice that the NVMe driver itself only accounts for around 1.8% of the read latency. If the application can offload a custom function into the NVMe driver to submit read request and process read response, we can potentially reduce the read latency by up to 47%, which is very close to the speed up achieved by the kernel bypass approach. Let's take a look at an example to see how offloading custom function into the kernel can reduce the kernel software overhead. Many popular key value stores use B plus tree as their own uh, data structure. Without in kernel function, a B plus tree index lookup consists of issuing multiple IO requests to traverse the B plus tree from user space. Initially, we are at a root node. We need to issue the first read request to fetch the root node from disk. The read request needs to traverse the entire kernel software stack to reach the storage device, and the data needs to be sent back to user space. The application would then parse the data to determine whether we arrive at the leaf node. If not, it will extract the offset of the next node to fetch. Since we haven't reached a leaf node yet, the application will issue another read request to fetch the next node. 
the new read request will traverse the entire kernel Solvio stack again, and the response will be returned to user space. The application will parse the node again and find that this is still not a leaf node. Therefore, a new read request will be issued to fetch one of the children of the current node. The new read request follows the same data path. And finally, when parsing the data, the application finds that this is a leaf node and can finish the lookup. Here, we see that node parsing and IO request submission are performed in user space, which means we traverse the full kernel software stack multiple times. Now we show how offline custom function into the kernel can help B plus tree index lookup. Assume that the application can offload a custom function to the NVMe driver. We still start from the root node and issue the first request to fetch the root node. The first request will cross the kernel boundary and traverse the submission path of the entire kernel software stack. However, when the first read request is completed, instead of returning data all the way back to user space, we can call the custom function right at the NVMe driver. The custom function will parse the data and submit the next read request directly to the storage device. This is also the case for the second request. When the third request is completed, the custom function finds that this is a leaf node and return the leaf node back to user space. Here, we only traverse the full kernel software stack once and reduce the latency of an intermediate I.O. by up to 47%. We call a sequence of such I.O. requests as a chain of dependent read requests. We find that chain of dependent read requests are very common in storage applications. B-tree and LSM tree, including their variant, are used as the on-disk index in most of the storage engines. They both issue dependent read requests to perform lookup. Therefore, we want to build a framework for storage engine to accelerate dependent read requests using internal functions. To achieve this goal, we build XRP, a framework for internal storage functions. XRP allows application to offload custom function into the kernel. When the application initiates a chain of read requests, the custom function can then be called to parse IO response and submit more requests if necessary. Only the final result will be returned to user space. We can use XRP to accelerate many types of operations, such as index lookup, range queries, and aggregations. In XRP, there's a key question we need to answer. Given that custom functions offloaded by the application may be buggy or malicious, how to ensure that user-defined function cannot compromise the kernel? Fortunately, Linux eBPF, which is also called BPF, is a technology that lets application offload simple function to the Linux kernel safely. We can let application write their custom function as BPF function and use the existing BPF infrastructure in Linux to load the custom function into the kernel. To ensure safety, BPF programs are statically checked by the BPF verifier before being loaded into the kernel. In fact, BPF is already widely used in networking. For example, it can be used for packet filtering, packet forwarding, packet tracing, and network scheduling. In these networking use cases, a BPF program can operate on each packet independently. However, on the contrary, a, BPF, a storage BPF program needs to traverse a large on-disk data structure in a stateful way. This is not an easy problem. XRP is the first system that adopts BPF to reduce the kernel software overhead for storage. To adopt BPF in storage, we address the following research challenges. Since this is a short presentation, I'm not going to cover the solution to all these challenges. Instead, I will show how to write a storage BPF program in XRP. Here, we present a simple BPF program for B plus tree index lookup. The BPF program needs to parse the tree node fetch from disk and submit the next request until it reaches a leaf node. A context is passed to the BPF program as the parameter. It, can, it has the pointer of two buffers. The data buffer stores data that was fetched from disk, and a scratch buffer is provided as a private scratch space for the use of this application and a BPI program. The scratch space can be used to store a lookup parameter or intermediate state. The kernel never touched the scratch buffer. The data buffer contains the B plus tree node that is going to be parsed. 
The search key is stored in a scratch buffer by the use of space application so that it can be used by the BPF program. The function first checks the type of the current tree node. If this is a leaf node, it can return the result to user space without submitting more I.O. requests. Otherwise, this is an internal node, and the function needs to search for the next node to fetch. The fanout field records the number of children in the current node. We can linearly search all the pivots to find the next node. Here, max fan out is used to ensure that this for loop is always bounded. Without it, this program would be rejected by the BPF verifier. After finding the child node in need, the BPF program extracts its address from the current node and specifies the next request in the BPF contacts. This is just a very simple example. In fact, BPF can traverse many different data structures. We integrate XRP with two key value stores. The first one is BPF KB, a simple B plus tree key value store we built to take advantage of a fast storage device in XRP. It allows us to test the performance limit of XRP. We also integrate XRP with Wild Tiger's LSM tree. Wild Tiger is a popular key value store and is part of MongoDB. By integrating XRP with Wild Tiger, we show that XRP can accelerate a production key value store in YCSB workload. Due to the time limit, I will focus on the first two questions in the evaluation. What is the performance benefit of XRP, and how does XRP compare to kernel bypass? You can find the answer to the other question in the paper. To study the performance benefit of XRP, let's look at the multi-threaded throughput in BPFKV with uniform random rate. The x-axis is the number of threads, and the y-axis is the throughput. Note that we use six CPU core for the evaluation, which is shown by the vertical grade dashed line. Compared to read syscall, XRP can double the throughput of BPFKV. We can also see that XRP can scale well even if the number of threads exceed the number of cores. This is because XRP alleviates the CPU contention by reducing the CPU overhead per I/O request. To see how XRP compared to kernel bypass, the performance of SPDK is added to the throughput graph. Here, this multi-thread experiment approximates a multi-tenant environment where each thread represents a different storage application running on the same machine. We see that when the number of threads does not exceed the number of core, SPDK always achieves a better throughput since it doesn't incur the overhead of the kernel storage stack. However, SPDK failed to scale beyond six threads because SPDK threads cannot yield CPU when waiting for I.O. to complete. To sum up, XRP provides performance that is close to or sometimes even better than SPDK without sacrificing isolation or CPU efficiency. We also measure the tail latency in the multi-thread experiment. The x-axis is the number of threads and the y-axis is the 99.9% .9 tail latency. The gray dashed line shows the number of CPU cores. Similar to the throughput result, compared to using read syscall, XRP improved tail latency of BPFKV by up to 45%. We can also see that tail latency of SPDK spiked to around 10 milliseconds when the number of threads is greater than the number of cores by more than 50%. In summary, XRP is the first system to use BPF to accelerate common storage functions. Also, XRP captures most of the performance benefit of kernel bypass without sacrificing CPU utilization and access control. We are actively integrating XRP with other popular key value stores, including RocksDB. XRP is open source, so try it out and see whether it can make your database faster. You can find me by email for any question. Thanks.